Welcome! In this video, we will take a brief look at Cumberland County's Math EOG data and then examine the I Notice I Wonder strategy for building better problem solvers. As I was looking at last year's Math EOG data, I quickly started to notice some things. Before we examine the I Notice I Wonder strategy for building better problem solvers, let's take a minute to notice and wonder about last year's EOG data. For the sake of time, we will only look at third grade. However, trends found here carry over to the other grade levels as well. In third grade, the weakest domain was measurement and data. In fact, measurement and data was almost 10 percentage points lower than the next lowest scoring domain in third grade. It was almost 26 percentage points lower than third grade's highest domain. As you look at the standards for measurement and data, jot down some I notice statements and some I wonder statements. Here are the standards related to the measurement and data domain. The left-hand column indicates the number of items assessing each standard on the EOG. As you make your I notice and I wonder statements, skip the standards that have been crossed out as they were not directly assessed on the EOG. At this point, you may pause the video. Hopefully you have had a chance to record some I notice and I wonder statements. Since I can't have you share your statements, let's talk about some of mine. Overwhelmingly, I noticed that all but one of these standards pertain to problem solving. I wondered what we could do to support problem solving. I also wondered what percentage of the EOG these measurement and data problem solving standards accounted for. As it turns out, the MD standards pertaining to problem solving account for 22% of the EOG. So what is the issue with problem solving? Here is a list of things some teachers have told me, plus some things that I have observed on my own. Students don't know where or how to start, so they just take the numbers and do something with them. Students don't try to understand the story in the problem. In the literacy classroom, we teach kids to do close readings and make sense of the situation. However, all that seems to go out the window in math class. Students do calculations without reasoning. Many of the strategies students are taught do not focus on reasoning. For example, this cubes strategy asks students to circle numbers, underline the questions, box the keywords. All of these steps can be done without even reading and making sense of the situation. Important information is missed. If students are following a prescribed list of steps like cubes, they often miss important details. For example, students often miss details that contain number words rather than numerals. And lastly, quick tricks can be misleading. Key words can be misleading. Any of the words on this chart could pop up in a subtraction problem, missing add-in problem, or multiplication problem. But somewhere along the way, students were taught to leave understanding and sense-making in the literacy classroom and memorize a list of keywords in math. How about we create a safe environment where students focus on sharing their thoughts without any pressure to answer or solve a problem? Do you remember at the beginning of the video, I asked you to make I notice and I wonder statements about the data. There wasn't a wrong or right answer. All the statements were welcome. What if there were no wrong answers in math? We could just take away the question and have students notice and wonder things about the information. When we start this process with our students, we can do it with just about anything. Show a mathy video, a picture, or one of our meaningful math tasks or another word problem. Let as many students as possible share. Accept all of their statements. Record their statements. Try to avoid praising, restating, clarifying, or asking questions. Let the kids own this process. And then ask, is there anything we recorded that you're wondering about? Anything you need clarified? But then have the students who shared do the clarifying. At the end of the process, you can make some observations and reflections. Once the students get comfortable with this process, we do need to realize that statements need to be math related. However, there are non-mathy things kids might notice and wonder about that may help them better understand the story. After collecting statements, have students classify which statements are mathematical. Discuss what makes them mathematical. Seeing numbers might be a clue, but something can be mathy without numbers. For example, the statement about part of the pie missing at the bottom left. I would say this is mathematical because a part is a fraction. This process of making statements and discussing the math in the statements is a great way to allow all students access to a problem. 
It breaks down barriers and engages everyone. However, we must continue this process over time so students can become more purposeful and more mathematical in their thinking. To further help students refine their ability to generate I notice and I wonder statements, ask some follow-up questions after the problem-solving process is complete. For example, which statements were important to us? Were there any statements that we really didn't use? How do we come up with statements that are mathematical and what makes them mathematical? Did we get stuck because we missed something? Why did we miss it? What could we do differently next time? The benefits to noticing wondering are huge. It increases the understanding of the story, the quantities, and the relationships. And it helps make predictions about what the problem is asking and possible answers. For more information about I Notice I Wonder, be sure to check out these articles. Thanks for taking the time to dig into Cumberland County's Math EOG data and learn tips for problem solving.